Hey everybody, Bones here, Bones Garage, just bringing you an update what's going on at the garage. So, 2008 Toyota Tundra V8 5.7 liter. When we pulled the spark plugs out, if you look here, the spark plugs on these are set up like a Hemi. They go through the center of the head, and then they go through the valve cover. And there's a seal right here that keeps the interior of the spark plug hole from getting oil in it from the underside of the valve cover. Your coil pack goes into here and plugs into the spark plug and then is held down by this bolt right over here. So everything goes right here. So you can't really see this. Well, one of the things we noticed when we pulled the coil pack out is there's your spark plug right there and you can see it right there. We noticed if you look in there how wet the interior of that tube is. Well, it's supposed to be perfectly dry. This one's nice. This one's really nice and dry. There's no oil getting in there and this one's perfectly dry. No oil's getting in there, but this one you can see how shiny it is in there. You can actually see the spark plug reflecting off of the wall. That's not supposed to be in there. There is not supposed to be any oil. The oil's actually getting in through the seal. And um, the only way to fix that is you have to pull the, the valve covers off. So all of the wiring harness that's on top of it, all of the hoses for the heater have to come off. And so does everything else. And you can see there's one of your heater hoses right there. And you can see the antifreeze in there. It all has to come off. And then the valve cover has to come off. And there's a billion and a half bolts holding the valve cover on. Once you get everything off, that is the bottom side of the valve cover. Your tubes for your spark plug sit right here. These are the seals. And these seals are rock hard. They are so rock hard so they have to be changed from time to time and i called them up let them know that it's not something that's detrimental but sooner or later it's going to cause issues with the truck he said just go ahead and change it don't even think twice about it. just change it if it's a problem change it fix it get it done so we went ahead pulled everything off ordered all the new seals all the new gaskets everything we need to do the job we're going to pop those out and this spark plug tube right over here let's see if i can get to it where is it uh, i can't see it there it is this one had a bunch of oil and you can kind of still uh, let's see if we can get it to focus you can kind of still see all the oil that was in there um it was really filled with oil and that was this tube way back here it was really filled with oil i mean the whole tube had a good amount of oil in it so we're gonna fix all that up and these seals sit right over here on the tube so all the oil that's getting thrown around by the cams and this is your intake cam this here is your exhaust cam all the oil that gets thrown around by them all hit against here and then if the seals are no good it just works its way in over time so he said go right ahead fix it and get everything done and these are really nice motors his is in for a car that has or a truck that has over 200,000 miles well over 200,000 miles this thing looks really, really good. It is in absolutely great condition for that many miles. But again, he takes care of it. Oil gets changed regularly. He brings it in for maintenance. Now, this is your cam phaser. And these actually end up moving back and forth. So if you're hard on the pedal, it's going to want to retard everything. Once it notices some knocking inside of the motor, in other words, pre-detonation occurs, it's going to want to either advance or retard these cams, depending on what position your foot is in, what, how much load is being pulled by the truck. 
And that's what these phasers do. They actually physically move the cam forward or backward a little while it's spinning at a gazillion RPMs a second. Um, it just changes its timing to give you better, not only fuel economy, but power as well as to keep it from pre-detonating. This is your timing chain off of your crankshaft. This drives your intake cam. Then your intake cam, it has another sprocket on it, which this chain right here, all it does is drive your exhaust cam. So it's just a loop right there. And this is a loop that goes all the way down to the crankshaft, comes back up and loops right into here. Then if you look down in there, there, this is your tensioner shoe right there which is also your tensioner it keeps that timing chain nice and taut no matter how much the chain starts to wear out it will keep it taut again up to a certain point then if you look deeper into the head now this is your cam the cam has a lobe on it and you can see this is the top of the lobe right here this lobe right here will actually end up pushing down on this roller as the cam spins around. This roller actually is sitting on top of your valve tip and this is the top of the valve right here. So it will push down on that. This is your spring retainer and then there's two little locks right here. One here and then one on that side and you can see the split right there those little conical locks lock the retainer to the valve and then the retainer retains the actual valve spring which is right here and you can see the bottom the the, the middle of the valve the valve stem through the spring and then if you look even further down like right over here you can see the umbrella seal or the valve seal and that's right there and that's what helps keep oil out of the combustion chamber is right there is that valve seal there so as the cam turns and you'll see like right here you could see how it's round here but it triangulates right over here that triangular cam or lobe pushes down on that roller that roller then pushes down on the valve the valve then opens up and allows the exhaust in case of the exhaust valve allows the exhaust to escape from the chamber the combustion chamber and out of your exhaust system this would be your intake and it does the exact same thing except for the intake it takes the, the clean or the new fuel and air lets it go into the combustion chamber and then the spark plug fires and fires that combustion or that fuel air to combust and again here is the top of your retainer and your valve and you can see here how it's round and then it's triangular over here that would be your lift so from here from the bottom all the way to here would be your bottom of your cam the lowest point of the cam then from here to here would be your lift and then from here to here would be your duration how long it actually keeps the valve open. So your lift controls how far the valve opens up and your duration controls how long the valve stays in the open position. So that's kind of a basics of how this all works in here. And uh, it's really cool. I, I love all this kind of stuff. I love mechanical, I love motors, and I love the way some of these new vehicles are done. Like your Ford Coyote motors they are basically the same thing whereas your Chevy LS motors are more towards the old LT style motors which have the cam buried right about here in the center of the block then you have the lifter which sits on the cam then a push rod which sits on the lifter then the 
rocker arm which sits on the push rod the rocker arm sits on a pedestal or a rocker stud and then it actually does the actual opening of the valve as the rocker arm rocks back and forth it will let the valve open and it will allow the valve to close so those are the two basics between a dual overhead cam and a single regular push rod style motor with the cam buried in the center of the motor so there you go little lesson all righty guys i know a long video i will talk to you soon have fun okay bye